Hello, I am John Najarian, and RebelCon 2022 is almost here. We do have a virtual pass. The virtual pass gives you full access to everything, all the streams, the live trading sessions, all of our fabulous keynote speakers. So to learn more about what's going on at RebelCon 2022, whether you're in person or virtual, check out marketrebellion.com forward slash Dallas. Good morning. I'm Pete Najeri, and this is The Take on this Tuesday morning. And yes, it's RebelCon week, as a matter of fact, and we are all excited about getting that all kicked off later on in the week. Before we get there, let's look back at Monday and just see what was another pretty wild ride, quite honestly. When we look at the, the previous week, and I talked about this yesterday, we were down pretty extreme last week, down 1,500 points on the Dow. That kind of says it all. The NASDAQ followed along as well. As we kicked off on Monday, we also were down early on. That improved and, and changed almost imme immediately. Almost in the first hour or so, we were back into at least somewhere close to positive territory after starting off down triple digits for the Dow. We hung around for a while, and in that final hour, boy, we had a nice explosive move out of the Dow, 240 points higher to finish the day up 200 points. The NASDAQ same sort of a deal. It was down early, down about 85 points. It rallied back off of that almost immediately. And in the final hour, and it's interesting how that works, but in the final hour, about a hundred point move to the upside to finish up 86. That gives you a little bit of an idea that things were a little shaky early on. They even stayed a little shaky throughout the day. But at the very end, we did see that nice surge in that final hour crude right around that 85, 85 and a half level yesterday. That has changed. We had Nat gas kind of approaching a little bit closer to eight, got up there towards 780. And that was something that we were watching very closely as well, because that's something that's been all over the map. You know that if you've been watching the take for a while, we got up there towards 10, we pulled all the way back. We've been a little bit everywhere, but underneath eight now for a few sessions, at least the two year, that's really what everybody's been focusing on. We talk about that in the macro minute when we get onto the rebel's edge, which is on Mondays and Tuesdays and Thursdays. 1 p.m. Eastern, John and I talking about things. In that macro minute, I basically just say each and every time, take a look at the 10-year. That's your macro call. It gives you a great visual on where the markets are most likely moving based upon where that 10-year is and, of course, the two-year as well. Well, the 10-year was about a three, four, five, two-year pushing right up against that four level. So that's really something that I think everybody has been a little bit shocked at, including the Fed, and we've been watching that very closely. 36.6 million contracts trading yesterday. Kind of a light day, quite honestly, especially now that we're back. We're back in the seat and we're looking for those volumes. We've had it, but yesterday definitely a little bit quieter than expected. We have volatility just underneath that 26 level as well. And the sectors. The sectors shifting around pretty dramatically. You had names like Pioneer in terms of energy. That was actually going... Uh, getting hit a little bit to the downside, but then you had Occidental moving to the upside. Unfortunately for energy, there really wasn't a lot to say there. It's been one of the leaders both to the downside and the upside, but yesterday the upside move really came from a little bit of a different area. We had a great turnaround in healthcare. Despite that, it's still finishing negative territory, but you had names like Merck and Pfizer and Bristol Meyer all actually contributing to that. You had technology that started out flat, and then moved nicely to the upside. Apple, Meta, Netflix. Apple really did have a nice percentage-wise, had a pretty nice move for that big monster of stock that, that Apple is, as we all know. We also had a nice big turn in the financials and JP Morgan and Bank of America contributing to that as well. We also had the material space. That really had a pretty decent jump. We look at late names like Freeport Mac, I'm looking at U.S. Steel, I'm also looking at Nucor. All of those names specifically when you look at, at what was going on with Freeport, a really nice move to the upside. And that was something that it was a lot of that move in that final hour or so of the day. Consumer discretion, that finished up more than 1% yesterday. And Amazon and Tesla, huge contributors to that move as well. Mosaic and CF, we talk about this a lot. The movement, the ups and downs. As a matter of fact, we talked about this on Pete's Covered Calls yesterday as well as maybe 
that might be an area that we might actually dive into and maybe put that in the portfolio as well, either Mosaic or CF. But that ag's part of uh, of the world, and that's something that had a pretty decent day yesterday, along with General Motors, along with some of the builders. We've talked about Pulte. We look over at Lennar, also look at Zscaler, and the semiconductors actually turned out to have a pretty decent day yesterday as well. So today, everybody, of course, we've got the Fed and the Fed's going to be talking and people are going to be watching and waiting and wondering. And let's also think about this. We've talked about this many times. The transparency of the Fed has been very clear. It's the reaction oftentimes, despite that, <laughs> that, that, that entire world that they've opened up and they essentially tell us, hey, we're looking at data. We are data driven and this is what we are seeing. So this is the moves we're going to make. I think a lot of that is definitely something that has been foreseen, but it still will be somewhat of a jolt to the markets because until they hear it, they don't believe it. But the transparency clearly has been there. So early on, we were down a couple hundred points on the Dow, down about 80 points on the NASDAQ. We have slid a little bit. NASDAQ down about 110 now. Looking over at, at the Dow, which was down, last I looked, it was down somewhere between 360 and 380. So definitely taking a little bit of a hit on the chin. but. Like yesterday, it was the final hour, and that is what really matters. It's like the fourth quarter in football. That is what matters. But there is something to be said for all of that in between as well. Crude, as we talked about, 85, 86. Now we're looking more at 83, 84 for crude. A little bit of an easing back, nat gas, kind of just hanging around where it has been. We've got volatility kind of creeping up again, back towards 27. You've got that VXN, the volatility of the NASDAQ. That's up there getting closer and closer to about 34. So we are watching that very closely. Two-year kind of nibbling right at that 4%. Matter of fact, the 10-year, it's not only over 3.5, it's starting to push towards 3.6. So it's, it's, it's a very rapid move from the 10-year as well. Bitcoin just sort of floating around there near that 19,000 level and not recovering very well after getting hit all the way down into the 18,000s just yesterday. Every single sector in this first hour has been in the red and remains in the red. That obviously can change. It's a long trading day. Materials, it's gotten a little bit worth down two and a quarter percent. I'm looking at communications. That remains where it was, down about one percent. Consumer discretion, sliding a little bit more, down one and a quarter. Looking over at healthcare, that's been on the slide for sure today. It's actually was down about one percent, now down about one and a half percent financials, another one that's really started to slide to the downside as well, down close to one and a half percent. But not everything is terrible. We look at when, and we've been talking about when we start to open up a little bit more in China, then we'll start to see some of these casinos maybe start to make that move. I think a lot of people were very, very and far too early in this world because all it's done is continued this downside slope. But today we are seeing a little bit of that move to the upside from when. As a matter of fact, we might even have something in the unusual in this category as well. Chinese names looking pretty decent today, starting to get a little bit brighter as well. We look at NetEase and PDD and JD all leading to the upside along with Moderna that got hit yesterday, but today back around again. And we talk about this name a lot. It seems to do that one step forward, three steps back kind of a thing. All you've got to do is take a look at what this thing looks like on a chart. You'll understand what I'm talking about. Under pressure today, Ford, the news that they gave was not positive. That's also dragging down GM. We look at Nike, look at PayPal, look at Dow, look at Caterpillar. You kind of get the idea. Today, by the way, at the market close, we're looking at negative markets, at least right now. If this continues, this is just what the doctor ordered, as a matter of fact. How do we trade unusual options in a down market? At the market close, you can sign up for this. At the market close, you get an opportunity to have Ryan and Wayne, and, and they're going to give you a full breakdown on what they are seeing and how they are approaching these markets. Because for a lot of you, if you don't understand the derivatives world, there are plenty of ways to play the markets, whether that's to the upside, whether that's to stay sort of flat against volatility, or is it to the downside? These guys are going to be helping at least give you a little bit of an idea of how they are moving around with the unusual option activity for that downside move like we have been seeing last week and like we see today. A little bit of that turnaround yesterday, but not today. Today, at least in this first hour, not looking so good. I mentioned the casinos. Here we go. Unusual option activity. 
And by the way, you're going to be able to check out John and myself with the Rebel's Edge today at 1 p.m. Eastern. He is in Puerto Rico. There are some bad weather. The weather there is terrible, but hopefully things are going to go fairly smooth for John to be able to be connected to us. But it's going to be a wild ride for sure for him as, as Puerto Rico is really getting hit pretty hard. But he and I will be having the Rebel's Edge with that macro minute, with the four topics of the day, with two unusual option activities, and with the sports side of things. And by the way, when we talked about yesterday and the posers being the potentially the Tennessee Titans, a lot of people like them as a potential front runner as far as the AFC. Not looking so good in these first two games. You don't want to judge it off two games, but let me tell you, they lost a lot of firepower, and that firepower showed themselves, one of them at least, yesterday with the Philadelphia Eagles with A.J. Brown. Boy, he's a heck of a player. We all know that. So, unusual. Las Vegas Sands trading right around 40 bucks, 2500 of the November 44 calls. Buying time for this to happen. They're not right on top of it right now because of the fact that we don't know when China's really going to be fully open again. We still don't know, but going out to November certainly does buy some time. That's exactly what this trader's doing. Buying the 44s, selling the 49 calls against that trade. That whole dollar value would be a dollar trade for a $5 spread. But We'll focus on those 44 calls. 160 to 170 was the price. You're buying a lot of time. There's also, this is out of the money call. So that is not part of the premium, but obviously time has some value. And that's what's really going into this along with the implied volatility. 2,500 of those 44 calls being bought. Folks, we'll see you on the Rebel's Edge, 1 p.m. Eastern. Until then, good luck and have a great day of trading.